So first, let's do a, um, a mental health check-in. So along this uh, coronavirus situation, I want to know how each of you are feeling. Are you doing really great? Are you doing pretty good? Are you okay, you guess? Are you starting to struggle? Are you having a really hard time? Do you feel like you need to reach out for support? So I'm doing between really great and pretty good. <laughs> so um, who's next and who'd like to tell us how you're feeling? I'm doing pretty good. Okay. Um, a couple of days ago, I was doing pretty good, but now I'm starting to get kind of excited about my birthday. So now I'm. Oh. <laughs> and when is your birthday? Monday. All right. <laughs> I have a quarantine birthday this year. So. Okay. Um, I'm doing pretty good. I've been going to work, trying to keep my mind, uh, trying to be productive. Mm -hmm. around the house and you know you know just being productive not just uh, keeping my mind idle on just one thing mm -hmm. doing more trying to stay outside you know to get my gather my thoughts together so you know yeah I'm doing pretty good. thank you okay all right so the coronavirus, um, the new nouveau coronavirus the next the reason that it's called um, Nuvo is because it's new. There are coronaviruses that have been around for years and years and years, but there's there has never been one like this one, and that's what makes it so different. And when people say, you know, well, people die from the flu, people die from HIV, people die from car accidents, it is it it is not the same as this. Um, and when people are dying with this, the rate of contagion is so great until you'll have um, something that looks like a, a hill that goes up and comes down like that for all the other viruses, but this one shoots straight up. And that's what's different about it. That's why so many people are dying and why it's so hard to get over this one. The other thing is the way that it attacks the uh, lungs. Um, and that's why so many people have to be put on respirators because their airways are clogged and they cannot breathe. Um, that's one of the reasons why it's not only suggested, but it's mandated that when you go out, you wear a face mask if you are outside where other people are. If you're in the house, of course, with your family, you don't need to wear a face mask. But if you're in a situation where you're with other people, then you do. Uh, and, and you're protecting other people from getting the virus um, through uh, even talking now. They're saying that if you're so close to someone that you can get the virus from talking. Um, some people have a lot of symptoms and then others are asymptomatic, which means that they don't have any symptoms at all. So the regular uh, symptoms that are followed with this virus are fever, cough, shortness of breath, sore throat, headache. And so if you have all of those things, but especially if there's a fever associated with it, then um, you should seek medical help. Um, again, uh, by the time people think about going to the doctor and they're short of breath, they're really short of breath. It's really hard to breathe and they feel like um, there's an elephant on their chest, so to speak. Okay, anybody have any questions or thoughts about that? Okay. And so because of the way that um, this virus can, um, can, you can infect other people is so that's why there's the hand washing. Even, even when you don't feel like you need to wash your hands, it's a good idea to do that. Wear face masks, disinfect, stay at home, and use a tissue if you need to cough or use your inside of your elbow. I want to say something about um, physical distancing because we are told to keep a physical distance, but that's different than a social distance. We have to remember that we're not isolated, that we can um, do things like Zoom or, you know, 
if you're visiting a family member, you can, just like you saw in the picture, you can stand out in the yard, but um, going over to someone's house and, um, you know, having a barbecue or a party or something like that, it, it's just not something that we should do because it's so contagious. Um, one of the things that I heard that a, a particular um, group of people were trying to do, since the new rules say that you have to only congregate in groups of five, and those five people have to be six feet apart. So it's not like, you know, okay, so you can have five people over and then, you know, just, just behave as normal. It's five people, but those five people have to maintain a six foot distance. So there was someone who was trying to have a big gathering and they said, well, we're going to meet in groups of five. Um, and I think it was like 50 people were going to meet in groups of five. And they thought that was okay, but it's not because the um, six, you can't, they were not able to maintain that um, six feet of distance. And that gets really hard. There are other people, um, uh, not my son, the barber, but another barber um, said that he thought that it was okay for him to cut his family's hair because they were his family but the rules are that you can cut the hair of someone that's within your own home, you know, but, but you can't go from house to house to house to house to house and cut people's hair, even if they are your relative. So he was really upset about that because, you know, he wanted to help um, his family out. Um, sports are not allowed unless it's golf or tennis, something like that, but only if you're not sharing the equipment. So um, all fitness centers are closed. If people wanna sell their homes, then it has to be a virtual kind of looking at the home and all that kind of thing. And of course, um, all purchases of food have to be um, distance as well. So you can get online orders and um, uh, drive throughs. But even with that, the person who is in the window is supposed to wear a mask and they're supposed to wear gloves. So any thoughts or questions about the rules in Durham, uh, Durham City and Durham County and the state? Okay. Okay, so, so oh, go ahead, sorry. Mm -hmm. So could this effect go in my longer? I hate to say yes, but the answer is yes. Um, it may go, some, some states and counties are extending this until uh, May 15th. I haven't heard anything about that for North Carolina yet. So right now it's still going to the 30th, but you know we'll hear from the governor. Um, Durham is number three in, in uh, numbers of cases in North Carolina. So um, you know we, we have to understand that this social distancing is really helping keep all of us safe. The other thing is um, that if we had the testing that we needed, then people could be tested. If they don't have the virus, then you know we could kind of think about them as a group. If they're people who have had coronavirus and they have a test and they don't, they can't, well, and they're immune, then they can be a group over here. And then you test people that have the virus and then you help them to get well, right? So if, but, but we don't have the number of tests in order to do that. So that's what the problem is. If we knew that, then people could go back to work, um, stores could open, but even with that, we'd probably still have to wear masks and have um, social or physical distancing. So, Ogana, uh, we just have to wait and see. Okay. 
So the other thing we're hearing is about um, more African Americans that are affected by the coronavirus than other people. And it's because um, more African Americans have high blood pressure, diabetes, chronic disease, obesity, um, heart disease, and all those kinds of things. Why do you think Black people have more of these diseases than other people? Their choices in their lifestyle, like with food and how much they exercise. Yeah, very good. That's that's part of it. Anybody else? Uh, kind of like feeding off. He said we eat really bad. Like we eat really poorly. Um, a lot of greasy food, a lot of fatty food. Um, like even when we get together, cookout food is terrible. Everything is grilled. Everything is fried. Um, and other minorities somewhat eat healthier foods the majority of the time so yeah that's a, another reason too. yeah anybody else so um and tanya or angie if you have anything to say or anybody if you have anything to say about this so i grew up in the days of black and white tv <laughs> so and so um uh, when we used to visit our grandparents during the summer, my grandfather had a farm. So he raised his own chickens and, you know, whatever, <laughs> things like that. Um, but also grew his own uh, crops like uh, corn, string beans, black eyed peas, um, what else? Collard greens, watermelon, cantaloupe, honeydew. Okay, and so it was all fresh, but they did eat country ham, fried chicken, and things like that. But what did they do outside of eating that kind of food? Well, they had a farm. So it was farm work. So people worked on the farm from early, so they had breakfast, worked on the farm early in the morning until noon. Then they ate at noon, and then they worked until maybe four o'clock in the afternoon. So even though they might have eaten um, country ham, you know, grits with cheese and butter, and <laughs> then ate fried chicken and eggs every day, they worked it off during the rest of the time. And then they ate fresh vegetables. I mean, the meals were more vegetables than they were meat. And so I think that in the older generation and population, since we were accustomed to those kinds of foods, not thinking about, you know, um, that we had to work it off, <laughs> um, then we sit with all this food that you know, that you're talking about, Daniel and uh, Jordan. Um, and, and so we're sitting with this food thinking it's okay because it sure felt good to eat macaroni and cheese almost every meal. I mean, I'm talking real macaroni and cheese. <laughs> so, yeah, so the habits that Black people have had for years um, have caused our health to be poor generally. Right, so anybody else want to say anything about that? Um, I also would like to add, I do agree with both of you, um, but also not just um, like the root causes of the problems, but also trying to, or get seeking help uh -huh. is much more difficult for the African American, African -American community. Mm -hmm. So it is what um, we eat, mm -hmm. but also um, the way we try to fix it or the education um, the resources are limited for the African-American community. So that's also something to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. That's very true. And um, I think it's, it's also, yeah, as you're saying, Angie, it's important to note that um, African-American people don't go to the doctor on an annual basis like we're supposed to. And, and so then some of the conditions that, that we might get treated for or even get medication for until 
so medication is not a cure, right? Medication is to keep you alive. <laughs> and and if you if you do what you need to do so you don't need the medication, <laughs> then you wouldn't have to take medication anymore. And I don't think that that's a message that's out there either. So all these things are what we need to think about now. Because if we as African Americans, as black people, can get our health in order during this time, then we'll come out better in the end. So as Angie was saying, um, there are some things that uh, are issues for black people that are different than other races. Un unemployment is higher, more black people live in poverty, um, more black people don't own homes, uh, it, and, and that kind of thing. And so we have to understand that that's the case. <coughs> Excuse me. And then couldn't see a doctor, as Angie was talking about, access to uh, care. More black people smoke, are not active, and are obese. So the reason that more black people um, have the coronavirus is not because black people are black people. <laughs> it's because of the chronic disease and underlying um, issues and challenges that we have. That's the reason why it's important for you who are young people and maybe your siblings that if you're going to visit grandma, grandpa, um, older aunts and uncles, that you make sure that you are wearing face masks and keeping your physical distance because you don't want to infect them with a disease that you may not even know that you have because you don't have the symptoms. <laughs> so those things are really important too. Um, I heard about a group of people who were going to have a, a jumpy house party today. I'm like, you know, seriously? <laughs> so when we make decisions like that, we're putting people's lives in danger. Okay, then on top of that, prolonged stress can cause heart disease, chronic, uh, heart disease, chronic disease, chronic headaches, digestive upset, sleep disturb disturbance, depression and anxiety and weight gain. So again, thinking about that African-American uh, population uh, and cabin fever, stress, um, then you can see how all of this can play into some difficulties that we as a population might have. So we have memories. This is a picture of um, the lift group that was at um, DSA. And uh, can you even imagine a time when people could get that close together? I mean, it's almost like, really, that's what it was like? But yeah, I mean, and you remember that. Now, what are you supposed to do as a teenager, as a young person who, you know, even though you, may not, you might not have been friends with that many people, but at least, you know, you had a group of people that you associated with and at least you saw these kinds of people walking around all the time, <laughs> right? Uh, in your schools and that kind of thing. And so now it's different. So this is really important. What about high school juniors and seniors who are missing SATs, AP classes, college visits, proms, and more, graduation? Really stressed and upset. And if, if um, you think that that's not important or that that's not hurtful, well, it is. And so you should feel bad about those things. I mean, it, you wouldn't be human if you didn't feel bad. So you talk to your parents, you talk to your relatives, you talk to, you know, people who graduated last year and they remember these things, right? They had an opportunity to experience all of them. So usually when we think about grief, we think about grief when it comes to someone that's passed away, someone that's died. But in a very real way, something has died for you. And those things that you could have experienced, you're not experiencing them 
And so your response to that sadness and pain is really the same thing as grief. And so these are the stages of grief. Denial. Oh, well, maybe, you know, this isn't really a big deal. It'll be over next week. Anger. And, you know, I can't even, even, can't even imagine what happens when you're angry. I mean, you might want to punch a hole in the wall. And, and remember that your parents and other loved ones may not see it this way because it hasn't been presented to them this way. Some, there are some parents who really understand how important these things, these experiences are because they had those experiences. I remember when I, you know, when I did this, when I did that in my prom, my graduation, my cap and gown, you know. Oh, I even have my cap and gown in the, in the closet. Let me show it to you, you know. And so they would be the parents that understand. Then there's some parents who had a terrible time in high school and didn't get asked to the prom, didn't go to the prom, where it's like, well, it's no big deal because I didn't go. So what are you fussing about? But I think the more that we can calmly talk to your, calmly try to talk to your parents and your loved ones and say, this is how I'm feeling. I feel like my dream has died. And so there's denial, there's anger, there's bargaining. Lord, if you just get me out of this, I promise to be good. <laughs> um, and then there's depression, you know, where, where you might be crying all the time. And then after that, there's something that's called acceptance. Acceptance doesn't mean that you give up on your dreams and what you want to do, but acceptance means that this is the state that I'm in. I may not like it, but how can I make the smoothest transition or have the best time that I can while I'm here in this place? So have any of you experienced any of the five stages of grief? And at what stage are you at this time? Um, I'm pretty much at acceptance right now because like I understand like this is the reality and it'll be over whenever it does and I can just go back and it'll hopefully be normal. Mm -hmm. Did you grow did you go through any of the other feelings before or did you kind of feel like you accepted it from the beginning? Well, I experienced denial because my teacher told me like before we left for spring break that we might not go back to school. And I was just like, it's not gonna happen. But mm -hmm. it did, so. Yeah, yeah, okay. Anybody else? I'm experiencing a bargaining right now. Mm -hmm. Because I'm kind of like, well, I can't do this, so maybe I can do this. Like, I'm trying to find other alternatives because mm -hmm. I can't do a lot of things that I wanted to do. But I think I went through all of these stages at this point. Yeah, thank you. I am uh, pretty much at the acceptance right now. Um, I was never really at like a depression or never really like angry, like, oh, like I wasn't, I was just more like, you know, okay, it's gonna probably be over. They were talking about canceling school, but you know, that's not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. But um, it eventually happened. But um, it kind of took a while for it to like sink in, like, you know, maybe things happen for a reason, so it'll be over soon, so I just, Got to keep the faith that, you know, we'll go back to school one day and life will go back to normal. So kind of accepting it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Ugana, how about you? Bargaining and acceptance. Mm -hmm. Because, like, I mean, it's like, I don't really, like, get to do the stuff that I wanted, that I wanted to do, you know? like prom and stuff mm -hmm. but at the same time like I have to accept it that like you know stuff can happen that everything happens for a reason mm -hmm. and um that like we just have to pray that like this will be over soon mm -hmm. and like everyone can like you know follow like social practice social distancing and staying at home mm -hmm. thank you and so thank you uh everybody and so 
you're missing some key activities that are memories that just about every person has had. Um, and so again, it's, and maybe you can share this with your friends too, because substance use, suicide attempts are going up because some young people don't know what to do with these feelings and never even thought about them as being stages of grief. But you're going through that, but your parents are going through it too because they're things that, that are outside of their normal routines and activities. And plus, they've never spent this much time around you, which is, you know, which you're lovely and wonderful and awesome, but it's just a, di it's just a whole different way of living. So um, that's something important to remember. And we talked last time about automatic negative thoughts and um, how to dispel them because negative thoughts have an impact on your body. Um, stress has an impact. Not eating right has an impact. Um, cabin fever and grief have an impact. And so we have to um, take care of ourselves. So be kind to yourself and then be kind to others. Always take a breath before you uh, respond to someone because you may be responding out of your feelings and not necessarily the way that you want to. Um, if you're in a stressful situation, um, it's, it's, it would be best to let someone know as gently as you can, I need a little space, I need a little time, I'm not feeling the best. And then you can agree within your household that you all understand that uh, each of you at whatever time might be in your feelings and you know, just, just need some time to regroup. So uh, one of the things we talked about a little earlier, not with this group, but with another, had to do with these three things and trying to practice them on um, a daily basis. Uh, deep breathing, that's when you breathe in really deeply, hold it in, and then slowly let it out. Um, it not only helps to calm you, but it also increases the oxygen levels that are going through your body that feed your red blood cells, feed your brain, feed every part of your body. And, and sometimes when we are not in the best state of mind, we really don't breathe like we're supposed to. And that's why when people are upset and, you know, just kind of, oh, ah, 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 and all in the uproar, you can just, you know that you want to tell them, just breathe, you know, take a breath. And so deep breathing is um, something we should do. And then Jason, in the video that he did, he said something about meditating, calming himself, which is a brain break. Um, and that was something that was really uh, meaningful. Uh, and then also being grateful. So do you do any of those three things? And if so, do you do them every day or will you start doing them now? So uh, do you do any of these three things or what else do you do? I just try to go outside and play basketball or just walk around and run or something. Mm -hmm. And I try to be grateful because I'm just like pretty content on, <clears throat> content on where I am in life right now, mm -hmm. other than the virus, so yeah. Thank you. I um have work, I've started working on being grateful because there's times I'd be like, I can't go to prom, I can't do this, I can't do that, and I try to be grateful. I'm like, well, at least I have this, at least I have family, at least I'm in a shelter, like at least I have food, like, you know, I have stuff to be grateful for, you know. Mm -hmm. Very good. Me, I uh, I work out like every morning. I go outside and I just like work out and like walk or like, I'm starting to like appreciate the little things mm -hmm. more, like just walking outside, just checking the mailbox. It's like, yeah, it's like, like yeah, that's like, it's really, 
yeah, I come back like, wow. Like, just the wind hitting my face is like, it's something magical, like now. It's like when we was in school, it's like, you know, going to school is kind of just like routine. But like now I'm starting to uh, appreciate the little things more. So, yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. What about you, Ghana? I just exercise like in the morning just to like make me have like energy. Mm -hmm. And then I also be try to be grateful because like, uh, where my family is from, like, they're suffering from hunger. And I just try to be grateful that, like, you know, I have, like, food and, like, mm -hmm. people are dying because, like, Nigeria is not the same country. So, like, mm -hmm. Jasmine doesn't really, like, help them. Mm -hmm. So you're in touch with your family members in Nigeria? Yes. Um, are, they, are they suffering from coronavirus there? I know there are a lot of other... Um, issues and challenges in Nigeria separate from it's coronavirus? It's hungry. They're suffering from. Okay. But but uh, do they talk about coronavirus or no? Um, yes. Okay. Like, like time. Mm -hmm. But it's more hunger? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That gives us another perspective on how grateful we should be. So thank you for sharing that. So slow, calm, deep breaths can help us relax, relieve stress, relieve anxiety, relieve depression, helps us to get a good night's sleep among other things. And breathing helps to quiet our mind. So um, sleep. Now, how many of you are going to sleep after midnight me me <laughs> 3 a.m is the new 12 a.m oh wow <laughs> <laughs> jordan i didn't hear you answer the question um i already go to sleep like a grandma like <laughs> i go to sleep early Really? So, yes. I go to sleep like 10 o'clock. <laughs> okay. And like everybody my age stays up so late. So when I get up in the morning, I have so many notifications because everybody that's when everybody's up and I'm knocked out. <laughs> so I go to sleep early and I get up early. <laughs> okay. How about you, Ghana? <laughs> Ghana, do you go to sleep after midnight? Uh, yes. Like what time? Um, sometimes I sleep around like one or two. Mm, okay. How about you, Angie? <laughs> um, I'm usually sleeping early, so 10 mm. or 11, but sometimes very rare days do I ever sleep, like maybe like at one. Mm -hmm. So I try to go to sleep um around 10 but sometimes i work until 11 30 or 12 a.m after getting up at six o'clock and working then so it's really bad and then i wake up during the night so yeah so you know so this message that i'm saying to you is not only for you it's for me too so this is you're helping me um keeping it real <laughs> okay and so it sounds like pretty much you're doing, all of you are doing well in terms of a calendar, taking one day, one week at a time, getting up, exercising first thing, or having a routine like that. And that's really one of the most important ways to get through this time, because you can lose track of days. I mean, every day is a Saturday, you know? Um, and so, as I mentioned last time, I believe that uh, Angie made this beautiful calendar and uh, with wonderful sayings. So the saying for this week is, the question isn't who is going to let me, uh, it's who is going to stop me. <laughs> so um, we want to make sure that with our goals and the things that we 
value and um, those things that are important to us that no one can stop those things, that those are our own values and our own dreams and our own uh, desires and nobody can stop them unless we stop them ourselves. And one of the ways that they can stop is through those automatic negative thoughts, um, you know, not, not um, realizing that we are grieving the, uh, the norms that we had in the past. Uh, and, and then we want to make sure that we are creating wonderful new norms for ourselves. So uh, change your mindset, believe in yourself, be positive, and enjoy life. <laughs>